Good morning everyone and welcome to today's worked exam answer video. Today I am having a look at a AS Paper 1 AQA back titration calculation question for six marks. It's quite a lot going on in this question and you may be able to see that I've got um, an array of colours here for this particular calculation. Now we are using an acid and an alkali, we're going to react those together and then we're going to take the leftover acid and we're going to do a second reaction of that with some sodium hydroxide. And the whole purpose of this question is for us to calculate the percentage by mass of one of the starting reagents in a powdered tablet. So let's go from the top. It tells us that magnesium hydroxide is used as an antacid to treat indigestion. And that's knowledge that you'll also need, by the way, for group two chemistry, a little aside. We're told that a student does an experiment to determine the percentage by mass of magnesium hydroxide in an indigestion tablet. So first thing I'm going to highlight is my magnesium hydroxide in light blue. We've got to work out the percentage by mass of that in the indigestion tablet. The indigestion tablet is therefore likely to contain other things, so that needs its own colour. So in green, we've got the indigestion tablet and we are told that we are adding 40 centimetres cubed of a 0.2 mole per decimeter cubed hydrochloric acid solution, which is in excess, to 0.200 grams of one of those powdered indigestion tablets. Next, I need my red because we've talked about hydrochloric acid and I always do hydrochloric acid in red. So we've got a volume and we've got a concentration for the hydrochloric acid that was added to that powdered tablet. Now we're told it's in excess and that's important because we can then see after we've reacted the excess of hydrochloric acid with the magnesium hydroxide from the powdered tablet, the amount of HCl remaining is then determined by a titration with 0.1 mole per decimeter cubed sodium hydroxide. They haven't given us an equation for that, so we will be writing one ourselves. We're also then told the volume of the sodium hydroxide that is needed to neutralize the amount of HCl that was remaining. And we've got to use all of that information, as I said, to calculate the percentage by mass of magnesium hydroxide in the indigestion tablet. So, when we've attempted questions like this before, I've always kind of talked about the need to work backwards through the information and that is something that we can do again here. Um, we can start by thinking about the second reaction with the amount of HCl that's remaining and how that reacts with the sodium hydroxide as a starting point. We can then calculate the moles of the HCl in the beginning. We can then work out the difference and carry on from there. However, you might wish to calculate the initial moles of excess hydrochloric acid first, and that would be completely okay. I'm gonna to stick to the working backward method because that is an approach that we'll need in lots of different types of calculation questions. So we don't have an equation to show how hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide react together. Now, hopefully it's not too difficult for us to write one of those ourselves. Sodium hydroxide is our alkali, hydrochloric acid is our acid. That will make a salt plus water. The salt is going to be sodium chloride and water is our second product there. That is already balanced, which is nice. So the reacting ratio of sodium hydroxide to hydrochloric acid in the second reaction is one to one. Now that's helpful because we've been told the volume of sodium hydroxide that was needed and we've also been given the concentration of 0 0.1 so from that i can work out the moles 
Now remember your cons your sorry your volumes should always be in decimeters cubed um, with the exception of ideal gas calculations but for all questions of this nature volume will need to be in decimeters cubed so I need to divide that by a thousand so 0 0.0295 2925 apologies can't seem to read today and then we're going to work out the moles so moles is concentration times volume so 0 0.1 times 0 0.0 2925 which is 2.925 times 10 to the minus 3. Now because the ratio of the NaOH and the HCl is 1 to 1 that also means that the moles of hydrochloric acid that reacted in this second reaction was 2.95 2.925 times 10 to the minus 3. Don't know why that's catching me out I apologise profusely. So that was the amount of hydrochloric acid that was remaining. And it might be helpful just to label that as such so that we don't get confused as to what that means later on. So that was the hydrochloric acid remaining after reaction one. Now, we can calculate at this point the moles of hydrochloric acid that we had at the beginning in excess. So 40 centimetres cubed, 0.2 mole per decimeter cubed, HCl. So again, I'm going to choose to label this so that I know what it is. I'm going to call it the initial HCl moles. And I'm going to work that out by doing my volume, which again I need to divide by a thousand to get it into decimeters cubed, so 0 0.0400, and then times that by the concentration of 0 0.2, and that will give us the initial moles, which was 8 times 10 to the minus 3. So if we know that that's what we started with before this reaction with the magnesium hydroxide and we know that after that reaction occurred, that's how much we had left to react with the sodium hydroxide in this second step. The amount of hydrochloric acid that reacted with the magnesium hydroxide will be the difference. This is what we started with. This is what we had left used up in the reaction will be the difference. So again, I'm going to label this as um, moles of HCl that reacted with the MgOH2 and I just need to, as I've said, work out the difference. So 8 times 10 to the minus 3 take away 2.925 times 10 to the minus 3, which gives me 5.075 times 10 to the minus 3. Now that's the moles of the hydrochloric acid. And if we come back up to the first equation, which they did give us, we can see that the ratio of the moles here is 2 to 1. So if we then want to get the moles of the MgOH2, we're going to need to half the moles that we've just worked out. So 5.075 times 10 to the minus 3 divided by 2 gives us the moles of the magnesium hydroxide, which is 2.54 times 10 to the minus 3 to three significant figures. And from there, we can use the MR of the magnesium hydroxide to get a mass. Now, if the magnesium hydroxide made up the whole of the powdered tablet, the mass should be 0 0.2. But having done this question before I videoed this, I know it's not going to be 0 0.2. It can't be more than 0 0.2 because 
then you would be having more mass of one element of the tablet than the actual mass of the tablet itself, which doesn't make any sense. So we're looking for a number that's either 0 0.2 or less, and I'm pretty sure, as I said, it's going to be no less than 0 0.2. So, mass of mg OH2 equals the moles times by the MR, and the MR is 24.3 for the magnesium plus two lots of 16 for the oxygens which is 32.0 and then 2.0 for the hydrogens and if I figure out what that is I get a mass of 0.148 grams to three significant figures so that's the mass of the magnesium hydroxide. And as we can see, the mass of the powdered tablet was 0.2 grams. So to calculate the percentage by mass of the magnesium hydroxide in the tablet, we basically want to know what percentage of the tablet is magnesium hydroxide. So we would then be doing the 0.148 grams that we just worked out for the mass of the magnesium hydroxide and we'll be dividing that by the mass of the powdered tablet and then to get percentage by mass times in by 100 and that gives me that answer there 73.968125 now, again, hasn't specified how many significant figures we need to give our answer to here. Even if it doesn't specify, we should be looking back at the numbers in the question and seeing what's the smallest number of significant figures that they gave us. So the value for the mean titer of sodium hydroxide was four significant figures, but the concentration and the mass and that concentration and that volume were all given to three significant figures. So I'm going to give this to three significant figures, which annoyingly, because it's 73.96, it's going to have to be 74.0. So three, significant figures. There we go. Hopefully all of that makes sense. But as always, if anybody has any questions, please do not hesitate to either leave a comment on this video or drop me an email to missgtutoringandresources at outlook.com. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Speak to you soon.